there is Sardinia. In here is the new Renault Zoe. It's nice. Hello and welcome to a lovely, sunny, balmy and warm episode of Fully Charged. Coming to you this time from Sardinia. I've never been here before. It's amazing. It's really beautiful. And we've been driving through it in this amazing car. This is the new Renault Zoe with a 52 kilowatt hour battery. Very discreet. Oh, pink. Oh, that's my phone charging because my phone's on the uh, inductive charging pad. <clears throat> I'm just going to engage. Oh, D. Of course, I have driven the Renault Zoe before. It's not like this is the first time, but it's the first time in this new Renault Zoe. So we're just driving out of the delightful hotel that Renault put us in overnight, the Poltu Quattu Hotel in Sardinia. So we started this journey this morning. They obviously charged these cars overnight at the hotel. We had 372 kilometers of range at 100%. Now, I just want to cast our minds back to 2012 when the Renault Zoe was launched. It had a 22 kilowatt hour battery. It was one of the first, along with the Nissan Leaf, first built from the ground up, purpose-built electric vehicles. It wasn't a conversion of an existing car, which many manufacturers did. It was always built as an electric car. And it was fantastic, really popular car. Um, after a few years, I think 2016, uh, Renault uh, upgraded the car a great deal and they brought out the, the uh, Zoe 40, which had a 40 kilowatt hour battery. So much greater range. So let's just quickly go back to the range. 22 kilowatt hours gave you a range of officially 100 miles, realistically 85 to 90, which is what most people were getting out of the car. Um, the Renault, Zoe 40 would be giving you like 120, 130 miles range. In now 2019, it comes out early next year. The deliveries will start in January 2020. This car, the Renault, the, at the moment it's just called the new Renault Zoe. It has a 52 kilowatt hour battery. And that gives us a range of well over 250 miles, somewhere around that re region, 370, 380 kilometers. Um, but I think this is the very interesting thing. Over that entire period, the battery pack size and shape has remained identical. So it's gone from 22 kilowatt hours to over 50 kilowatt hours in seven years. And that is partly to do with energy density of the cells, partly to do with the fact that Renault have managed to redesign the battery packing. It's not specific to Renault by any means. I mean, all, all the electric cars are increasing their range, they're increasing their battery density. That is common across the whole electric vehicle fleet. But it is really marked in Renault's case that uh, they've managed to make a car that's exactly the same size. I dare say, and I haven't actually got the facts on this right now, but I dare say the battery is heavier, kind of bound to be, because it's just more densely packed. So one of the reasons I was really excited to see this car and to drive this car, uh, you know, which is coming out the orders are already open. People are already ordering this new model. Um, but it's, it's because it's small and cheap, you know, because we have reviewed on Fully Charged recently a lot of big, expensive cars, uh, which are fantastic and they have a really important role to play in the grand scheme of things. But it is quite nice to have one that is essentially a lot more affordable. So you can buy a Renault Zoe with a, it's actually a 52 kilowatt hour battery. I think I may have misquoted and said it was only 50. 52 kilowatt hour battery. And all the lovely trimmings, you can buy that for 18 and a half thousand pounds on the road if you get a battery lease. So Renault have always done this. They've always had an option where you can, you don't have to, but you can lease the battery. Uh, you can also buy the car outright, in which case it will be about 25 and a half thousand pounds. That's including the government grant. So, uh, and some people got very angry about the battery leasing option, like, it, uh, like they got furious about it. I got lots of tweets and we got lots of comments on early YouTube episodes about the Renault Zoe. Why are they forcing us to lease the batteries? It's outrageous. 
really furious. People got really furious. And I just want to very gently and politely suggest it might be worth focusing your anger on areas that are maybe a little more relevant to the entire world, like the, the, the oppression and exploitation of vulnerable young people or the continued tax subsidies, tax breaks and support the fossil fuel industry gets from governments around the world. You know, get angry about that. I'm right behind you. Getting angry about whether or not to lease a battery in an electric car, it's debatable. The thing is, the lease is, a, is under 50 quid a month, and loads of people have done this in the past. I'm not going to go on about it now, but if you, if you uh, calculate the, co the cost of the lease of the battery, which means if something goes wrong with the battery, they just put a new one in. There's a bit of an advantage there. Not that stuff goes wrong with the batteries, as we now understand. Uh, but if you do lease the battery and you're paying somewhere around 40, 47 to 50 pounds a month, it's going to be a lot cheaper to drive still, even with the battery lease, than a comparable diesel or petrol compact C-segment car. See, I'm learning some things from Johnny. This is a C-segment car. Don't ask me why, but that's what it is. Anyway, that I think is a really reasonable price. You know, I'm impressed with that. And the the experience I'm having at the moment driving it, so I've driven it now 24.2 kilometers and the battery is still at 95 percent and we're going through Sardinia and I think one of the reasons that car companies choose places like this is one it's quite nice to go and therefore journalists will put up with you know if they said we're doing a test drive in Daventry probably get less people turning up Sardinia is lovely, but it's also hilly, so we can go up hills and down hills, so we get some idea of what the, the regen is like driving it here. But, you know, to, be, to have driven 25 kilometres and used 5% of the battery is, it gives an impression of the, the range of this car. The charging is slightly different, and it's quite intriguing how they've approached that at Renault. It's a different idea. So I think we'll get a lot of criticism in the comments because this car can only charge at a maximum of 50 kilowatts on the CCS charger. Renault Zoe didn't used to have CCS, they used to have an AC uh, single socket which only did uh, 43 kilowatts AC, it will now do 50 kilowatts DC. If you want, you don't have to have that as an option when you buy the car. But using the same socket you can charge on any domestic charger at 7 kilowatts, like anyone who has an electric car will have that already. You can plug it into a seven kilowatt, but if you're out and about and there is, say, uh, the equivalent of destination chargers, they're chargers, say, in a car park of a supermarket or shopping centre or gym or sporting facility or leisure activities club, and they've got 22 kilowatt uh, destination chargers, this car will take 22 kilowatts AC. And that is faster than a Tesla Model 3 can charge. Tesla Model 3 can only go up to 11 kilowatts AC. So what that means is you stop somewhere for, let's say an hour, you will add over 70 miles range. So close to 100 kilometers range in that hour while you're plugged in doing something else. That makes a big difference. That is basically fast charging. It's not rapid charging, but it's fast charging. And I think it's intriguing that a car of this scale can do that. So you could really, uh, you know, if you're at somewhere for a couple of hours, you're going to add 140 miles range while you're having your lunch. You know, that is a thing that I always want to explain to people who've never driven electric cars is the charging stuff. All you've got to know is you never wait to charge a car. If you're waiting to charge a car, you've, you've planned your journey wrong and you do grazing. So the more places that have chargers you plug in, you only add maybe 20, 30 miles. Well, you've added 20 or 30 miles still while you're doing something else you're not waiting and I think that's the important thing is that rapid charges are vital along major routes but what's much more important I think is car parks places you leave your car when you're not using it those are places where we need chargers they're much cheaper to install we want car parks with hundreds of chargers in not one in the corner with a green leaf painted on the floor I'm really glad they have put CCS in it because the original one didn't have it. So that makes a, a big difference. And what we will discover today uh, is what the range is like. So we're actually driving over a hundred and about 150 kilometers uh, to go and have lunch in somewhere in Sardinia. 
and the car, you know, it's so, it's so massively within the car's range. We're probably going to use less than half to get there. So it was a really noticeable improvement in terms of range. As Johnny described very beautifully in the, the video about this car when it first was revealed, I think the interior, the interior I think is more impressive to me than the exterior. The exterior has been sort of tweaked and has different front bits. It's basically essentially exactly the same as the original Zoe. It's got a different nose, different charge port and things like that, but those are fairly cosmetic. The interior is really transformed and I, I much prefer it to the original. Lovely big nine inch touch screen there with your sat nav on. It has loads of other settings. The, the dashboard information is really clear and obvious. I know exactly how far we've been, how fast we're going, what the speed limit is, how much juice I'm using. All those things are really instantly apparent. They're controllable from the controls on the steering wheel. The gear shift, big improvement on the original Zoe because that used to be a sort of slightly clunky semi gear lever thing that you go ka -chung, ka -chung. This is just a, a I call it a, a direction toggle. You just pull it back once for drive, forward for reverse, in the middle for neutral. And then you, it has got the, the B mode, which I haven't, still haven't used because I've still not got, still got too much electricity in the battery. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get rid of it, but it doesn't get rid of it very quickly, this car. So the, uh, the energy efficiency is clearly a very important thing. See, they're talking about uh, 7.4, I believe, uh, kilo, uh, kilometers to the kilowatt hour, which is about just hovering around five miles to the kilowatt hour, which is kind of got to be the thing you aim to do, because that is a very efficient way of traveling. Uh, just to give a comparison, a petrol vehicle, even a super economic one, if you measure the petrol in terms of kilowatt hours of energy, a really, really efficient petrol engine is doing just over a mile per kilowatt hour. That gives you an idea of the uh, energy efficiency of electric motors. But we're going down a hill now. Hang on, I'm just going to see if, this, if, this, if we've got enough gap now to put braking on. Okay. So that's the first time I've used it. So at the moment it's putting 23, 24 kilowatts back into the batteries, which is like charging on a 22 kilowatt charger only more. So that gives it that, and that's telling me on the dash, which is useful, that's good. But I'm gonna take it out of B mode because it, it, I can tell it can put in probably about 50 kilowatts if you're going down a steep hill and you're slowing down hard. So it's still not got quite enough juice gap. Juice gap is a very technical term <laughs> which tells you how much empty space you've got in your batteries. So I've now driven 131.2 kilometers uh, on this journey. Uh, I, I just want to update the fact that I have driven the Zoe before on uh, all, every version of it. I've always liked it because it's such a tight, compact little car, really sensible design. There's no hesitation in saying this one's the best one. I mean, it's so good. I mean, we still have 65% of the battery left and we've done 132 kilometers, which for people who know miles, it's around about 81, 82 miles. Uh, of really mountainous terrain. I mean, we've been going up and down and up and down all the time. This is the first time we've now come down into the valley. It's actually flat, which is kind of weird because we've been going up and down. So my um, f f energy consumption is 13 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which we've worked out to be about seven and a bit kilometers to the kilowatt hour, which is around about 4.8 miles to the kilowatt hour which is really good. It's a lot better than a lot of electric cars. It's, it's, and it's hard to judge now because the kind of bar was set for us with the Kona in the Netherlands, which let's be honest, doesn't have a lot of mountains in the Netherlands. So that was a very flat, similar temperatures to this, very flat. And that was getting over five, 5.2, 5.3 miles to the kilowatt hour. And this is getting about 4.7, 4.8. And it's a smaller car. All that aside, you know, we've had to climb up some steep hills, we've gone down some steep hills, you know, so it has, that does always lower your overall consumption. The other thing I really do like, and I've sort of appreciated while I've been driving it, is the interior. And it is extraordinary what they've done. All the plastic inside here, all the plastic fittings, 
all the you know the the moldings around the dash everything is made of 100% recycled plastic it is actually plastic bottles and bits of plastic from old cars uh, that are, are mashed up melted down reused so it's 100% recycled plastic which is not a bad idea uh, for a use of plastic the material the cloth here is made out of recycled fiber some of it is actually plastic bottles some of it is the majority of it to give it the strength is in fact old seat belts from cars and also I think you know it's really worth saying that Renault I think are at the forefront of reusing uh, the Zoe batteries at the end of useful life in a car as static storage devices and that's still in its very early days Stuart, who is sitting in the car with me and, and coping with my vomit-inducing driving over the mountains, is uh, he has a power vault in his house which is using old Renault Zoe batteries. And Renault are very involved in doing that and in using their batteries. And in fact, I was talking to the head of Renault's electric vehicle development, and he is the proud owner of 5.2 gigawatt hours of storage in all the batteries that they've got in all the Renault Zoe's that they lease because basically Renault still own those batteries you're just leasing them from them and so that means they can then take them back at the end of life and reuse them in other purposes so he's got quite a lot of he's very proud of the fact that he's got five I think he worked it out on his phone on a calculator to work out how many gigawatt hours um, while I'm here I'm just going to do a thing right just to try this out because I haven't really done this so I've, it, we're on we're driving on eco I'm going to turn Eco off and just have a go. <laughs> no one behind me. Because I haven't done this before. Okay. So that's maximum thrashing it acceleration. I'm going to say that is not breathtaking. <laughs> it's actually very comfortable. And I was, by the end of it, I was going very fast. So it's a constant increase but the initial burst from a standing start is not impressive when you compare it to you know I'm not going to compare it to something like a Tesla but even a Jagai pace even a Leaf Leaf's got a bit more bump at the beginning that was actually quite a gentle uptake of speed Well, I've really enjoyed driving this car. I absolutely love it. This isn't the one I've been driving. I just want to point out that they have to recharge. I don't. When they got here, they only had 44%. I had 65 on the same road. I say nothing about other journalists' driving skills. So I think really crucial things about this car. One, it's got 10 years of development history behind it. It's a third generation. Renault really know what they're doing when it comes to electric cars. They have a huge network of service centers that, with trained uh, engineers and technicians that know how to look after these cars. That's a really big plus if you're buying a car. I think these cars are going to fly out of the showroom. The, the battery leasing, I think, is a really good option for people who want to buy their first cheaper electric car. I think this is very affordable in comparison with some of the cars we've been looking at recently, which are in the sort of 150,000 euro bracket. This is incredibly brilliant car with really, really long usable range. I'm really impressed with how it works. Uh, anyway, I can't go on anymore. We've got to get out of the sun. I haven't put my cream on. Please don't comment. I've only been out in the sun a few minutes. I've been in a car all day. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. It really, really helps us grow as a channel. Please do tell your mates. That would be nice. If you want to look at the Patreon link underneath this uh, episode, then please have a, have a look at that. But we are so grateful to all our wonderful patrons who make this show possible. Uh, we really couldn't do it without you. And uh, that's it, really. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Very discreet. A 
I just want to quickly mention Fully Charged Live USA on February 1st and 2nd at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Tickets are on sale now at fullycharged.show. 